<sighs> hey, what's up guys? My name is Acherno. Welcome back to another video. Got my coffee, means I can make a video now. So, today I thought I would kind of just make a little video. It's gonna be a small one. Kind of a midweek thing for you guys where I just, I just wanted to talk about something that I didn't feel would take that long. That being said, the amount of videos that I've started off being like, this is gonna be a short video, and then it's ended up being something that's like half an hour long has been like, I mean all of them really. But today we're just gonna talk about the way that I set up my C++ projects. These aren't necessarily going to be the best settings for everyone ever. However, it is what I use. It's what I've kind of learned, like grown into using over the years. And honestly, every single C++ project or like, and I'm not just talking about a single project, I'm talking about like a whole solution of projects. For every single one that I create from now on pretty much, I use these settings. So let's just, let's just jump in and take a look. So we've just opened Visual Studio. We've got our start page here. Nothing's, I haven't opened any kind of solution yet. I'm gonna create a brand new project and solution here by hitting File, New, and then Project. For now, I'm just gonna go under Visual C++ General and create an empty project. And then I'll just call it something like New Project. Now, in terms of the location, I like to store the projects that I develop under the C directory and not inside the user folder. That way, when I'm switching computers or anything like that, it's not going to break any paths. And really, it's just a lot easier to kind of store your development projects in some kind of central directory. So I like to do something like C slash dev, and then maybe we'll call it new project or something like that. Now, because we've got create directory for solution, it will actually automatically create that new project folder, so I don't need to write that. I'll just hit OK and we'll see what happens. Sure, it's taking a while. Okay, so once we've got this new empty project, you can see we have absolutely no files here or anything like that. If I right click on the actual project and hit open folder in File Explorer, you'll see the actual directory structure the Visual Studio has created for us. So what we've actually got is inside that dev folder, we've got that new project, we've got a solution file right next to there. You can see that also what Visual Studio has done is it's called our solution, the exact same name as our project. So that's not necessarily something that you want. If this is just going to be a solution with a single project in it, then maybe it is. But you know, if we're making like a game or something, then it's very, it's very rare for us to kind of want our solution and project name to be identical. But anyway, this structure is actually not bad. Um, we've got a folder dedicated for our, for our project. We've got both a VCX proj file and a filters file. I'm not gonna get too in depth about all the different files Visual Studio creates. That might be an idea for another video. But basically the VCX proj is our project file, which is just an XML file. And then we've also got a solution file, which is its own kind of weird format. It's a text file though. Um, and that's in its own kind of directory. Okay, cool. I actually like this structure. I'm not gonna change it too much, but you'll notice that also what we get here is a bunch of various folders. Now these are not folders, right? These are things called filters. Filters are not folders. If I right click on new project here and do add, you'll see there's no new folder, it says new filter. And if I add a filter called Cherno or something, nothing is going to change on our disk. That's not the way that it works. This filters file, however, does contain these kind of virtual folders that we create. So these are fantastic for just organizing your source code within folders that don't actually exist on disk, but they do exist in this solution explorer view. So if I was to go into source files, for example, and add a new item, source files isn't a folder. So if I add an item or something called main.cpp, once it creates the file and everything, you'll see that it's actually just created that right here next to my project. And that's just, I just, that's just, that's just messy, right? What, like what, why? So what I like to do is I like to create a folder called source or SRC, which contains all of my source code and header files and all that stuff kind of in that folder so that my project files and any other resources that I might be using in my project are actually kind of nicely separated into folders. And that's something that the Visual Studio doesn't set up for you automatically, so you kind of have to roll with it. So if we go back to Visual Studio, we can click on our project here and a little button will appear here which says show all files. If we click that, this view, this view is actually your directory structure that is on your disk, that is on your hard drive. So if I right click now and hit add, you'll see the filter is replaced with new folder and I can actually make a folder called SRC, right? If I alt tab back to my file explorer, look at that, we've got a folder called source. So let's move this main.cpp file into that source directory. Now I can do so using Windows Explorer, which would mean that I would have to manually update it in Visual Studio, or I can just click and drag it like that. And you can see that on disk, it's actually moved it into that directory. Okay, so now Visual Studio is actually behaving a little bit more like I would like it to. So this kind of show all files button is incredibly useful. And honestly, I kind of use that mostly. If we go back to our filters, you can see that 
main is still inside the source files. This is just a virtual organization kind of scheme, right? I can drag this to header files. It doesn't matter where this is, right? It could be just in no filters, which would mean it's here. I can just go ahead and delete all of these, in fact. It doesn't really matter. These, this filter view is all just, it's all fake, right? It's all just kind of there for you to just organize things into groups. It has no, no relation to actual directory structure on disk. So if I go back to show all files mode, there is my main.cpp file and I can do all of my code here. Let's go ahead and just write a quick hello world program, just something for us to build. All right, now I'm gonna compile this. So I'll right click on my project, hit build, and you can see that everything will build successfully. So where has Visual Studio put our exe file? If we look at the output, you can see it's gone to new project, then debug, then new project.exe. So debug being our currently selected configuration. If we open our file explorer once again, and we check this out. So it hasn't actually, you can see there's a debug folder here, which is in the same directory as our VCX proj file. However, if we open it, I don't see no, no new project.exe in here, right? So what's going on here? If we read this a bit more closely, it looks like it's just new project then debug. So it's not in that project folder, huh? Interesting. So let's go back to new project and then go back again and then debug and then, oh, it's in here. How strange, Visual Studio. So what's actually happened is it's put our intermediate files into a folder called debug in our project directory and our actual final executable binary into a folder called debug in our solution directory. I don't know who makes this stuff up. It's really quite annoying. I have not actually met any professional developer who leaves these settings. Everyone changes them because they just, honestly, they are weird. Now it's not a really big problem to change these and you can create templates and stuff like that. So I'm not roasting Microsoft too much for deciding to do this. I'm just saying that it's a little bit weird and especially for people kind of starting out who might not know that you can change this. It, it, it could actually be quite difficult to find your damn executable binary once you've built it. So anyway, so if we go back to Visual Studio, if we right click on our project and hit properties, You'll see that under active, under our active configuration and platform, we have an output directory and we have an intermediate directory. So that's actually where everything's going. So you can see that everything that we write here, by the way, is going to be relative to the project file. So if I put something like intermediates here, it's going to be relative to that project file. So in the same directory as our project file, which is this VCX proj file, it will actually make a folder called intermediates in this case and put them all there, okay? So what I like to change this to, now first of all, I like to go to all configurations so that I'm editing all configurations. I'm not gonna make any, any I'm not gonna save any of these changes that I made here. Um, even all platforms, okay? And then what I like to do is this. For my output directory, I like to put my output directory in my solution directory, slash bin, slash platform and then slash configuration and then end that with a slash as well. Okay, so what it's going to do in our case is put this into the solution directory, which is the root of this whole thing. What that means and the reason I've actually chosen solution directory is because if we have multiple projects, right? For example, we build DLL files or something that are needed by our main application. We want them all to be in the same folder, right? I don't want to have to go into every project's folder and then deal with that. I just want all of my built binaries in one place because that's usually the typical case. You want them all there. So they're going to be in my solution directory in a folder called bin, which stands for binaries in the appropriate platform folder. So in our case, really, it'll only be Win32 or X64. And then inside a configuration. So either debug or release in our case. Now this last part, putting it into a separate folder for each configuration. Again, not something that I do all the time. Sometimes I just like to change the target name to maybe have debug appended to it for the debug build and potentially release or nothing at all appended to it for the release build. It's, it varies honestly based on how I, how I deal with my projects but in this case, I'm just gonna put them into a separate folder. Now, intermediate directories are going to be very similar. I'm going to put, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna copy everything from the output directory, put it into the intermediate directory. The only difference is that inside bin, I'm going to make a folder called intermediates and then put them there by platform, by configuration. Again, sometimes I put this intermediates folder at the very end so that it's already inside everything, but this way it's just a little bit cleaner for you to be able to copy, say, the platform that you want and only have all the built binaries, no intermediate files. So if I now hit okay, right, we can clean our project, which should get rid of a lot of the previous files. If not, because it never really does work that well, I like to go into the file explorer and just delete all of these files that I don't care about. 
So all the debug directory, you can see that now, I'll even delete this bin directory. You can see that now all we have is a solution file, the project, we've got the project filters and a user file, which is just basically our current Visual Studio configuration. And then in source, we've got main. So it's nice and clean. I'm gonna go back to Visual Studio and I'm going to build. All right, cool. So if we go back here, and we go to bin, we can see we've got intermediates and then Win32. So inside intermediates, we've got Win32, debug, that's all of our intermediate files, such as our OBJ files. And then if we go back, you can see we've got Win32, debug, and then that is our exe file and we can run that and everything's fine. All right, cool. One little thing as well, you can see that we've got a double backslash here because of course, I did forget that the solution directory, anything that has like project directory or solution directory actually has a backslash on it already because it's a directory name. So we can just go back and fix that up so that we don't get the double backslash. If you're not sure what one of these macros is equal to or you would like to see what it is, you can just go under edit here and then we can expand this macros view. And then over here, we've got everything we want. So for example, that solution directory that I was talking about, you can see it's C dev new project and you can see it does in fact end with a backslash. All right, cool. So that's pretty much it. That's all I just wanted to say. Setting up your directories, really important, really quick tip that, that will just kind of make your life easier as far as organization goes. These are the settings that I use all the time. We might talk about more or less the compiler settings and linking settings and all of those kind of maybe release mode optimization settings in another video. I just wanted to show you guys the basis of how I set up every new C++ project that I do. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.